Good afternoon, our community of LinkedIn, our brothers and sisters in the lending world. If you were here earlier, you experienced some technical difficulties. And so, yes, we too have technical problems. However, we recovered quickly. Tal had time in his day. I had time in my day to, to reorganize and present to you again. So without further ado, Dal Schwartz is, uh, we we'll call you this Chief Strategist at the uh, Canadian Lenders Association. Thank you for your time today. Please introduce yourself and, and what do you do as a strategy officer? Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me twice, uh, Jeff. I've never been so uh, prepared for a webinar before. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I, um, I help uh, uh, run the Canadian Lenders uh, associations, uh, uh, policy group, and, uh, and and a few other operational functions uh, at the association. But the the CLA is uh, Canada's largest trade association uh, for lenders. So mm -hmm. we have uh, close to a hundred members from coast to coast, uh, and uh, we started about uh, roughly four years ago. A few non-bank lenders kind of came together to say. Uh, the market has matured significantly. It's time to get a little bit of uh, representation from a policy perspective. Uh, and that was a collection of uh, consumer lenders, small business lenders, folks in auto, mortgage. Uh, and we've roughly doubled in size uh, every year uh, for the past four years. And we really see that growth as representative of the entire market uh, growing, uh, both in terms of you know, loan volume, but also in terms of uh, you know, new entrance into the uh, Canadian marketplace. Uh, quite a few American players coming up here. Uh, you know, a, a few specialty lenders popping up over, over the past few years. So uh, it's a it's very exciting uh, uh, space to be in. And uh, yeah, and we're we're uh, thanks for having us uh, on the show. Fantastic. Well, we obviously we enjoy the digital the digital lending uh, sector of the world. FinTech has been great for us. And, you know, unfortunately, in these COVID times, it's really presented us the opportunity to, to, to present our value proposition to organizations like you, to traditional lenders, and also non-traditional lenders. So, so thank you very much for your time today. Um, you know, at, when I was preparing for our time, I saw that, that Ottawa was going to, I, I guess, release or, or looking to lend out another two billion dollars to a hundred thousand firms in Canada to kind of support those entities through these crazy times. Do you have any updates that you could talk to me about? Yeah, so so back in March um, uh, at, at the beginning of the pandemic, Finance Canada, which is uh, uh, the, you know, the budgetary department you know in, in charge of, of uh, distributing a lot of these um, uh, uh, financial programs, they instituted some really sweeping uh, government subsidies. So that was both uh, at the consumer level, mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of like an unemployment, uh, you know, insurance kind of on steroids program. Uh, you know, we, we, we introduced uh, uh, rental subsidies for uh, commercial entities and also small business uh, wage subsidy. Mm -hmm. So when those were announced, finance uh, approach uh, the CLA and, and, and many other industry groups to say where are gaps in uh, our, our our subsidy strategy and, and where would you, you know, uh, uh, like to see us implement a, you know a, a, either either distribute more funds or alter the way that we are distributing funds so so the big issue that we identified um, was at the small business level so uh, similar to uh, or sorry dissimilar to to the uh, PPP. Uh, the program that you guys have in the states, uh, the wage subsidy here was only distributed through bank entities and through mm -hmm. larger credit unions, and uh, that meant excluding the fintech sector. And the issue with that uh, primarily is the fintech sector uh, is the lender of choice for a lot of Main Street small business uh, merchants. Those are you know like your mom and pop uh, restaurant, bars, art galleries. The you know the kinds of storefronts that really define uh, a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So uh, the proposal that we uh, uh, put out was a uh, asking for an additional set of funds to be distributed solely through 
uh, fintech credit providers in order to get funds out uh, more efficiently, faster, uh, and in a very transparent uh, uh, fashion. Very good. Kudos for you guys and your organization doing that. You know, I think that that's extremely important that that we represent those communities uh, that we serve each and every day, uh, that make up those neighborhoods, that that make up families um, and community. So thank you very much. Um, from a digital lending perspective, what trends are you kind of seeing uh, in the CLA? So I, I think the biggest trend that we've seen over the summer was kind of a trend that didn't happen. Uh, so back in March, you know, pundits were predicting mass delinquencies, uh, that it was kind of you know, doom and gloom, and this was sort of the, you know, the end of the world as we know it. Uh, and that really wasn't the case. Uh, you know, we've seen fintech lenders uh, perform incredibly well over the summer, and you know, there are quite a few reasons uh, for that. You know, partially it's amazing government subsidy programs. You know, uh, partially it's because discretionary spending is way down. Um, but we attribute it mostly to uh, actions that lenders took. So uh, actions like you know, proactively engaging with, uh, you know, their, their clients offering, uh, you know, borrower assistance programs, referrals, things like that. And it was also steps that they had in place well before the pandemic, uh, you know, being tech uh, forward, having, uh, you know, really strict underwriting guidelines, uh, you know, having uh, very strong uh, digital loan servicing uh, uh, partners or in-housing some of those services and using best in class technology providers like you guys. Uh, and we, we see that because of those uh, steps that were taken, uh, uh, FinTech lenders are, are in a very strong and defensible position uh, now. Fantastic, yep. I think we had a session where we had talked just solely on loan modification and, and you know, the importance that that is to a lender, but also to a borrower, you know. And you know, I would argue, as with you would probably experience, um, that in that world of, of loan deferment or modification, communication is critical. Uh, credit policy is extremely important, but being able to communicate with the borrower quickly and mm -hmm. coming up with an agreement that, that, that is satisfactory to the lending organization and to the borrower is critical for success. Totally, totally. Yeah. No, I mean, I, at the end of the day, every every policy that the CLA puts forth, or guideline, or best practice that that we uh, uh, collectively agree upon, is to support the borrower. And uh, you know, primarily, you know, from a lender's perspective, that's just having you know great uh, customer service, you know, great client retention. Uh, you know, again, being proactive, uh, reaching out to to borrowers, asking what their financial position is, figuring out a way that the lender and the borrower can come to some kind of agreement. Uh, uh, and if there aren't certain policies in place, yeah, it's, it's time to uh, create those policies and use uh, uh, platforms and communication channels that uh, the borrower is comfortable using. Mm -hmm. Evolution, my friend, evolution. It's a good thing. <laughs> so, you know, what two points or, or what two highlights maybe you could share with us um, from a fintech perspective in 2020 that 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 you're familiar with? Sure. So the one that I pay uh, closest attention to um, is the shift in um, uh, uh, to, uh, to e-commerce. So I mean, this has massive, massive implications for the lending sector. Um, you know, in Canada now, Shopify is the largest company in the country yeah. by market cap, larger than all of our banks, which is, is pretty, pretty crazy thing to, uh, uh, to have. Uh, uh, you know, big commerce uh, by you guys, just IPO, it's almost tripled in valuation over the past few weeks. So there's a lot of excitement around e-commerce and it really has followed uh, uh, just this, this trend toward digitization. But the implications for the lending sector are, are, are twofold. One, on, on the merchant financing side, you have a lot of new uh, online businesses that uh, you know, need money for, for inventory, but have very measurable um, uh, uh, components of their business uh, that make uh, underwriting very, very interesting for, for a lender. So you have companies, uh, an amazing Canadian success story, ClearBank, uh, that really popularized revenue-based financing, which is a credit product almost 
mm-hmm. perfectly suited for 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 ecom. Uh, you have another group, uh, Lending Loop, just just launched a uh, business line of credit again, specifically targeting uh, uh, e-commerce merchants. Mm-hmm. So a lot of innovation happening there. Then on the other side of of the e-com boom, uh, you have the actual shoppers. So uh, point of sale finance before the the crisis was already one of the fastest growing credit sectors uh, globally. Now it is just skyrocketed, yeah. and uh, you know groups like uh, like Pay Paybrite um, in, in Canada uh, are really uh, leading that charge and, and offering. Um, amazing financing options for for uh, for shoppers. So on, on both ends of the e-com boom, you have a lot of innovation happening in lending, and it's uh, something that we're paying uh, really close attention to. Uh, Indeed. So yep. You know, it's amazing. Um, I think that the, the Amazon experience is really getting uh, fintechs, lenders, both traditional and non-traditional, to pay attention. Um, you know, if I could attribute Amazon and my attention span, all of a sudden I have a very little attention span. Mm. And so if I was going to go shopping for a credit product, you would think that I could have a decision in very short amount of time. Mm. And that that's not always the case. And so it's nice to see that, that there are people that are catching on to that type of strategy, uh, the importance of that type of strategy. Um, because that seems to be where all of this is going. Totally, and and I think the more we uh, uh, the more we go online, the more we digitize, uh, the more access we have to really interesting and rich alternative data, uh, data that might not necessarily be captured in a you know, in a conventional credit report. We're, by by you know by going through uh, you know, like your your Shopify back office or your Amazon back office, uh, lenders are. Uh, Making huge strides in, in, in how they're able to better understand uh, a borrower and then and better offer you know, new and innovative credit products, uh, uh, you know, uh, to that borrower. Fantastic. Well, Saul, if there if there's anything else that you would like to add, I think we're close to the end of our time. No, just a big thank you to uh, to Turnkey Lender. Uh, you know, honored to to be on the show and uh, uh, you know, very happy to be a partner of yours. Fantastic. Well, we're we're glad and, and happy that we're in partnership with you guys, uh, with the Canadian Lending Association. I greatly appreciate you getting us having two swings at this with our, our Monday technical issues. Um, if there's any questions, any comments, uh, any any demonstrations you would like to see, please feel free to reach out to us. We thank you for your time. Hope you have a wonderful Monday, and, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.